And Chris is bringing up the rear with 134,000. Chris is first to act in this hand. Doesn't have much of a hand. He's throwing it away, of course. And look at Phil here. What's, he's just going to call this. Hey, look at this, Vince. He's changed his style. So far, he's raised every time on the button. That's failed miserably. Now he's going to try a new tactic. He's just limping in on the button. Okay, so he's in a great position, but he's just calling it, limping in, as you say. He's just calling it. Very interesting. Now here's Antonio with a 3-5 off suit. He's calling 10 more thousand. Now, he was already invested. He already had a little money in, so now he just puts a little more, and he can see a flop. And Paul with a king four. Okay, seeing as they want to see a flop, let's see one. He said, let's see a flop. Who's going to get lucky? Flop comes king, 10-6. Flop comes king, 10-6. Antonio Number quickly six. checked. That helps Mr. Darden with a pair of kings now. Oh, he's betting it. He bets 60,000. He flopped 60, the top 000. pair. He's got two kings. Look at Phil with his money out, counting it up. He's going to do something here. He's counting out a lot of chips. He's trying to see how much money he has. He's got about 210,000 left. Look at this. Playing with his chips. He doesn't mind anybody waiting here. He's just, just going to take his good old time. And he no, folds and his hand. Folds. And Antonio, Antonio folds. folds. And Antonio folds. Paul this. picks up another pot. Phil had second pair. Check Give Phil credit. A great lay down on his part. Earlier this season, Phil Helmuth placed third in Aruba and just missed making two other WPT final tables. For most, that's pretty impressive. But for Phil Helmuth, you don't just get close. You're supposed to win. And I haven't been playing my style for a while, so it's been six months of kind of, you know, not much great's been happening. And now, all of a sudden, through mistakes I've made the last two weeks, and I figured some stuff out. Phil, you're doing this wrong and this wrong. Nip it in and let's play some poker. I just need to focus on winning. And a focused Phil Helmuth can be an intimidating opponent with an incredible feel for the game. I mean, come on, I know when people are lying. People can't hide. People want to hide like Chris Ferguson wants to have hair over his face and a hat way down and sunglasses on. I can still look down underneath Chris Ferguson's hat and I'm gonna get some clues. I mean, I'm a profiler. Why did they make this bet? Why do they have this look on their face? How much you got left? Why did they say this? Why did they say that? Boom, when other cards come off. And all this information adds up to a one key decision that I have to make. Boom, 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 boom. Information for me, boom, make the right decision. The last three big tournaments that I played in, I had a vision of who the person was that was going to win it. Three out of three times, I didn't see myself win it. Three out of three times, it was the person I saw win it. This time, I didn't see any of the other five win it. That's all I'm going to say. Well, Phil sure got his work cut out for him here today. Four players left. Paul Darden is a massive chip leader with nearly 900,000 in chips. Antonio second with about 300. Phil third with about 200. And Chris is in last position with about 100. So he's going to have to make a move quickly here. Now notice Antonio just folded a king-queen, Vince. Now that is kind of surprising in a four-handed game. He's just throwing it away. Now it makes it up to Paul. Now Paul got to see that Antonio was throwing his hand. He Race. has a, Race. let's see, he has a four ace in his hand. One. Whenever you have an ace in a four-handed game, it's a pretty good hand, and he's going to raise it. Total. Well, he's the big chip leader. He's playing against the two blinds now. He's got ace high. He raises the pot. He comes in for 200,000, meaning both Chris or Phil are going to put all their chips in if they play this pot. Paul Darden has given him no breathing room. There's no air. There's no mercy. This is power poker at its finest. You got Chris Bigless sitting there. He's considering this with an A6. Now, he is a rock. He usually likes to play, you know, real conservative. But you see how he, even he has to loosen up here and change gears to make it work for him. And here he goes. He's going for it. He's doing it. What a great, inter interesting call. Phil folds. What are we going to see here? We've got ace-six offsuit for Chris, ace-four for Paul. Now, there's a good chance this could be a split pot before it's over. Nine. It comes ace-jack-nine, which means both players have a pair of aces, Four. and they're going to use the it's jack the and the nine and the ten kicker. So right now, there's going to be a split pot unless a six or a four comes up. Give me another club. I don't want to chop it. Notice Chris could have won if a club comes up there. So he had the flush draw also. Now, what's amazing about this pot is, remember, Phil folded a jack-eight. He would have made jacks and eights. 
Antonio folded a king queen. He would have made the best straight possible. Kickers on the board. Both play. of the two guys that folded out of the four would have won the pot had they played. As it was, and Chris and Paul Chris. split the pot. Chris stays alive in the competition with four left. Well, you see some really aggressive poker here now. You see, if you have an ace in anything, it's time to raise. That's how you have to play. You have to play real fast when it comes down to the last four. The action is on Paul Darden, our big chip leader at the moment. Paul doesn't have a good hand. He folds. Paul folds. Chris Bigler has a 9-5 offsuit, and he's going to fold. And now it's the battle of the blinds. Our two young, aggressive tigers, the ones that are battling each other hard. Well, Phil's going all in like he should. He has a pretty good hand. King Jack offsuit, two different suits. He's going all in against his nemesis, Antonio. Now, Antonio's sitting on 300,000. He has him covered. If he calls and plays and wins this pot, he will knock Phil Helmuth out in fourth position. You know, it's amazing, too, is that he has king-queen. He, he has a better hand. What's he going to do? Well, we can see he's in a dominating position right now, but if you're sitting at the table, if you don't know Phil Helmuth's hand and a guy moves in for you for 200000 and you're looking at king-queen, it doesn't look that big, especially when you only have 300000 in chips. This is the ultimate test for Antonio the Magician right here. Kid, I'm rooting for you to call. Got to be honest with you. Phil cracks me up because he doesn't know what to do against Antonio, his nemesis who's been beating him all day. You know, he doesn't know whether to stare at him, get up at the table. Now he's starting to talk to him. Desperate men are doing desperate things, and that's what Phil is doing right now. Well, so far, Antonio has been in perfect step today. Looks like the Ohio State Marching Band hasn't missed a step, hasn't missed a beat. Will he make the correct decision here and call with this King Queen? Let's see what he does here against Phil Helmuth. I'm rooting for him to call. I just hope he doesn't outdraw me. Ooh. Listen to that. Now, Phil actually made that statement thinking he has the best hand. A little table talk, a big smile. He really believed that Antonio would have called already had he could beat the King Jack. But just look at the beauty of this World Poker Tour events. Because we can see their cards, we see the excitement, the electricity here, the problems, the decisions oh, he's going he's to make. He does it. Phil is, uh, is devastated. Here he goes. Way. Look at Phil. It's heartbreak for him when he sees that hand. Oh, no. It's King Queen versus King Jack. What a call by Antonio here. Phil Helmuth knows he's in big trouble now. Well, we've got a battle on our hands here at another huge WPT tournament. Don't go away. Back at the finals of the Lucky Chances Gold Rush Tournament. And right now, Phil Helmuth, the poker great, is in a world of trouble. Yeah, well, Phil wants to win so bad he can taste it. Phil Helmuth knows he's going to have to get lucky to win this pot. No, not yet. Big favorite, Antonio, is still in front after three cards. Let's see the next one. Nope, it's not going to do it for Phil. Phil Helmuth needs a jack or he will be out of this tournament in fourth position. And a queen comes queen. up at the river. Antonio wins the pot. He knocks out the legendary Phil Helmuth. Antonio's done it. The arms are raised up above. You show some class and shake my hand, kid. No, don't do the wave in that place. I always like, do the wave in that Our former that? world champion is history. He is crushed. This has not been Phil Helmuth's day. There's no question about it. He never caught any cards. Every time he tried to pick up a pot, they played back over the top of him. Tremendous poker player, one of the greatest, if not the greatest no limit poker player in the world. And he finishes in fourth place today with $34,000. He was outplayed, he was outwitted, and he's walking behind the curtain trying to get the heck out of town. It's very disappointing. I couldn't believe that Antonio had king queen that last hand. I mean, on top of all the bad luck that I have, for him to show up with King Queen in the big blind when I had King Jack, you know, a very frustrating day for me. Phil Helmuth finishes in fourth place. He will now have plenty of time to check out the Lucky Chances Casino and the rest of the San Francisco Bay Area. More like jump off that Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> and our Shauna Hyatt's been taking a look around town, too. In the mid-19th century, if you wanted to try your luck in the number one spot to gamble in the U.S., you first had to go west, young man all the way to San Francisco. 
150 years after the first golden age, Lucky Chances Casino opened just south of San Francisco and continues the tradition of offering the biggest and the best action the Bay Area has to offer. The people in the Bay here, area here, they love poker. Whoa, baby! It's terrific. It's a terrific little casino. We have a wide variety of poker games. We play seven card stud, Omaha, Texas Hold'em, anywhere from a 3-6 limit to a $1,000 buy-in no limit game. Every Wednesday and Friday we have live no limit games, 10, 10, 20 blinds with a $1,000 buy-in. What that means is, at any one time, you can lose all of your chips on one hand. People buy into that game for $10,000 on a regular basis. What they like about Lucky Chance is the staff. The staff here is very friendly. We have very professional dealers, some of the best in the industry. The food's been good too. So if you're ready to try your luck in a casino that has history on its side, here's some advice. Go west. There's certainly a lot of history here in the Bay Area. Absolutely, and that includes half of the final table. Phil Helmuth, Vince Bergio, <laughs> Tommy Garza, their history. Well, let's get back to the action with Chris Bigler on the button. Oops. And he goes all in. All in. Here goes Chris Bigler all in on the button with a Jack-10 offsuit. Now, that goes to show you, that's how you got to play. You're down to three players, you have a Jack-10, you push it. Everything. Well, he's got 115,000 is all. And here comes Antonio. Antonio has two sevens in this pot. And he's going to play with him. Yeah, I don't blame him. He's going to play that real quickly. Antonio calls. It's likely that Paul will get out of their way, and he does. This is two sevens against the Jack-10 offsuit. The two sevens are a very slight favorite to win this pot. I think Chris did the right thing by moving in there, and I think Antonio did the right thing by calling. So Antonio's a little bit of favorite. Here we go. He's still in front with a pair of sevens. Chris is going to need a Jack or a 10. And he spikes oh. a 10. Chris Bigler has caught a 10 on the turn. That's now a Antonio has got card. A, he's got to have a two-outer. So he, he does not get it. Chris Bigler yeah, has he, doubled up with a jack 10. He got lucky on 4th Street there to outdraw Antonio. It's the first bad break Antonio's had today. And it happens so quick. Just the turn of the card can change your life. Chris happened to get lucky and win the pot. We still have a three-handed race. Things are starting to look up for Chris Bigler, and as Shauna found out, that's a welcome change. Chris Bigler goes the extra mile to play poker. From his home in Switzerland, he's traveled to WPT events all over the world. But his trip to San Francisco has been the wildest one yet. On Wednesday, I played the major event of the tournament, in the, the leader tournament in Amsterdam. I got knocked out on Wednesday, on Wednesday night, so I took the early flight Thursday to, to Los Angeles, and from LA, there was a delay to go into San Francisco because of the bad weather. The whole trip from L from LA to here took eight and a half hours. After that, I, I couldn't sleep very well, so I came here, played poker, played a tournament, made the final table. The next night, I had to only three three hours sleep, and then I played tournament yesterday till five in the morning. But I feel good. I gotta win this today. And all this from a guy who's retired. I had a computer software business, and that computer software business I sold. So I'm, I'm kind of a retired business person, but I play tournament poker full time now. Full time means I still live in Switzerland. There's no poker in Switzerland, no real serious poker in Switzerland.